God bless you. We're just again happy and excited about what God is doing in the land and you that are watching us wherever our voices are being heard in this in the radio station and wherever you're viewing us. We're just glad what God is doing in the land and I'm excited about what we've been doing. I thank all of you that's called in and, and uh, you've called in and you've shared uh, you said, Dr. Brinson, continue to keep up the good work, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited that uh, you uh, somehow have found our show uh, acceptable to you, and you can continue to watch this show. So while you we're on now getting ready to do what we do, if you would just hit that share button, we're in a sense getting ourselves ready to go on, but just hit the share button wherever you are, and uh, we're going to be coming on in a minute or two, but I just like to take the time out for all of you that have uh, been following the Brinson Institute. Uh, this is the Brinson Institute, and sometimes you want to call us, and so therefore from time to time on the bottom of the screen you will see our numbers. Uh, feel free to uh, just go into uh, our numbers, uh, go into uh, our uh, Facebook and uh, call in the number and just talk to me. Let me know um, how you're doing. Let me know how you're feeling. Let me know what we're doing. If you have any ideas or, or some other things that you'd like for us to have and talk about, uh, do, do call us or inbox us and say, Apostle Brinson, we're excited about what you're doing and there's some things that we'd like for you to cover and we'll be so happy to cover that for you and we will do that and we'll get that on our show and uh, we'll be just excited about what God is doing. So those of you that are on now, we're on live, and, and uh, we're, we've just shared, and, and so if you want to share, we'll be excited about what God is doing. So we'd like to thank you. So we just had a great time on last week. We got so involved, and um, First Kings chapter 17, there's so much in it. We said we were going to have to do a part two because there were just so many things going on and so many things happening in this text. And I went back over and I said, wow, I found some more. So I think last time we, we had just kind of ended, we talked about the provisions and we were talking about also as we share around the theme of the there of God's provision. Are you at the there, T-H-E-R-E, -E, are you there, there? Where did God, where has God sent you? Where did God tell you to be? What is that process? Sometimes we say, God told me to go here. God told me to go there. I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be there. But when God sends us through the process, we get frustrated by the process. So I, I want to encourage you on today. I'm talking to somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to. Don't be discouraged by the process. Whatever the process is, accept the process. And, and be truthful to the process. Believe and have faith that you heard God, you, you are sensitive to God, and go with the process. All things work together for the good, even though they may not all be good, but they work, and we know. The scripture says, and we know. That means, based upon your experience, you know. Even as you look behind and think about it, you know, no matter what it has been, some kind of a way, it worked itself out for the good. And some things that made you cry, certain things that had you frustrated, sometimes you look back over it and you laugh and you say, God, I'm so glad you did not let, or I'm so glad I obeyed you even when I didn't see it and understand it. Somehow I went and you confirmed it and I stuck with you all along the way. So I've kind of dwelt in your presence. I dwelt as we say in the secret place. I, I, I've abide under your wings, under your guidance, and somehow you have allowed me. The writer says, I will instruct thee, and I will keep thee, and I will guide thee with mine eye in the way that thou shalt go. And so here, as we continue in this process, we're talking about the there, the there of God's provision, the there of God's assignment, as we continue to look at 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 1, the whole story, as we look at Elijah, the prophet, on assignment by God, and then what God tells him to do. 
Last week we got caught up and, and, and excited about the ravens in the brook. He said, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. I began again to take a look at, we said as we go into the text, we wanted to spend some time in helping you to go in, look at a biblical character or read a story in the Bible and pick out the, 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 the people, the people, the places and the things that are in the story and see if we can guide and glean some principles from the story. So we picked out Elijah as one of the characters in the story. We spent some time last week talking about the ravens, which was a bird in the story and the food in the story. Isn't it something that God says, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. And they brought him bread and uh, meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. So God, his basic needs of breakfast and supper was taken care of. And I guess he drank from the brook breakfast and supper, but he had maybe his lunch and snacks came from other things, either either from the leftovers <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. It, but isn't it something to know that the provisions of God while on assignment, it's enough to satisfy you for your need. If you're creative enough while on the assignment, it'll satisfy you. Now that takes me all the way back to, and I'm digressing for a moment because I got a whole hour to stretch this story. I'm digressing. I'm going back to the children of Israel in the wilderness. They had manna. Now, he told them every morning, I'm going to rain down. When you get up in the morning, there's going to be manna on the ground. All these people, he fed them with manna. We said angels' food. He fed them with manna. He said, I want you to gather enough just for the day. Just for the day. Don't be trying to, you know. And on the weekends, on the Sabbath, you're gonna get, I'm going to send enough for double. Now, if you do more than what you need overnight, it's going to stale. It's going gonna, it's gonna to spoil. Sometimes we like to, in our communities, as we say, hog up, you know, and I'm, I need enough to last me for tomorrow. No, no, thy mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. How do we trust God to receive fresh information, fresh revelation, and in his process, supply our daily concerns and do not become anxious for tomorrow knowing that every day is important. So when I wake up in the morning, I thank God for his day. Let me live out this day because my flesh, my flesh it worries about tomorrow, next week, where I'm going to get this. Now, we all go through that. But somehow, if I work with God daily, thy mercy is anew every morning daily, and if I present myself a living sacrifice on a daily basis, I become sensitive that God supplies all my needs. Now that's a that's more than that's that's a lot said because for some of us when it comes down to really actually experiences what we say, preach and testify, we have a tendency to testify, use statements of scripture, grab traditional sayings, make affirmations, and when God takes us through its process, it becomes another experience. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We are called to have an experience, or the Greek word, you shall know the truth, or Greek word, you shall geosiko. Geosiko is to know by experience. I want you to know by experience. You can read my word, get a revelation of my word, but I want you to live out my word. Genosico, I need you to know by experience the truth. And that truth that you know by experience, take on my yoke, learn of me by your experience, you grow and you live. God, help us in our experiences of Genosico that we learn of you through our experiences and we learn how to trust you in our experiences that we know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord, that are called by and to his purpose. So are you there? What about the provision? Let's look at this now. So we, we looked at the ravens that came to feed him. Isn't it uh, exciting 
one of the things I was thinking about when he said, go hide thyself by the brook Chera in the ravine. That means that Elijah had to be outside. That means he had to make camp outside for whatever season it is. Some of y'all need to Google. Some of y'all need to go into your research. I'm giving you a, a homework assignment. See if you can go in and find out in any of the commentaries and any of those persons that have did a story on uh, Elijah. Google it. Study it with me. Go in and look at what the commentaries and others said about Elijah and uh, his assignment and the commandments by God and glean some principles. Go with me in this story and get some more. I'm just dropping bits and pieces, but go with me and you will begin to see some things. And I believe that God will bless you. The Holy Spirit will bring some other things out. Some of you preachers and teachers, go ahead and do the series and teach and train your people on trusting God and being there and looking at God's assignment and his provisions and how he moves. So therefore, here Elijah has in his assignment, there's an outside living. So if he's hiding by the brook, question, what was he hiding from? Oh, wow. Who is he hiding? He didn't say, Elijah, go and stay by the brook. Go stay. But he said, no, go hide thyself by the brook. That means when you're hiding, hiding from something, or being in hiding is different from just living and just being out there. When you're hiding, you, 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 you're more sensitive to your surroundings. So I want you to go by the brook, Cherith. I want you to stay at the brook. I want you to be sensitive to your surroundings. I want you to trust me. I need you to cut away everything else. And I want you to be at the brook. I wonder what Elijah's diet was. I wonder what he liked. You know, chicken and greens or, you know, sometimes God take you through process. Apostle Brinson, when God sends me to my there, uh, does he is he concerned about my needs and my desires and my wants? Do he give me certain things or do he put me in a situation where I'm just in a fast situation? Well, he, he may do both. So what was his diet? Then I began to understand the ravens the ravens feast up on fruits, nuts, berries, grains, as well as dead fish and dead animals, but as well as fresh kill. Fresh kill, fresh animals, fresh fish. So that means if Elijah, go with me a little bit, let's go with me, get into the text, is hiding himself by the brook. He has to be an outdoorsman. That means he knew how to start a fire. At night it gets cold, so he, I'm sure he, had, he wasn't shivering at night under the cold somewhere. Isn't that something? He had started a fire. And so if he got some fresh fish day or evening, that means he could, you know, make him a fire and cook his meat. Some of his meat he ate raw, some of the meat could be cooked fresh from rabbits to squirrels to whatever the ravens brought him. And then he had fresh, he had fruits fruits and nuts and grains so he had a diet and he could drink water from the brook that was God's provision God's provision at a place for a time and a season now I want to take a moment because we talked about the raven and the type of raven and back in those days also it's been known that ravens also um, in some areas make good pets so now some of you all you know you don't mess with your cat don't mess with your dog. Your dog is waiting. If you go through problems all day long, you know that when you come home, that dog is waiting on you. That dog is waiting on you no matter what you did. The dog is waiting on you. He's waiting to lick all over you. He, he's your, he waiting to jump on you or the cat, you know, whether it's finicky or not, it's going to brush up on you. you. You know, some of y'all got your little pets. You know what I'm saying? Now, isn't it something that that in doing a research study that I found that, that, that in certain areas ravens have become domesticated and ravens were used as pets and you know what many of you that have pets what they do they keep you company so now God says go and hide yourself by the brook I've commanded the ravens to feed you could it have been also 
that uh, Elijah had a pet raven. Oh, come on, Apostle Branson, where you find that? Well, I mean, you go, go figure. Could it could have been that while he was out in the woods that there was a couple of animals out in the wild or others that he uh, befriended because he was living outside by the brook. There were other people that drank from that brook. I mean, any kind of bears, animals or whatever. So now he's out there. And so God can give you peace in the midst of animals and your environment. When God puts you in a process, assign you to an area, somehow he gives you peace in your environment for you to control and speak to the environment that you're in through the process or gives you grace to sustain yourself and be, uh, Paul said, I've learned that whatever state I am there to be content. So Elijah had to learn how to be content and his state of his assignment. Now I want to take a place I said we need to look at in our story when you do an exegesis of the text and break it down. You need to look at people, places, and things. So I went in and I began to look at uh, the brook Cheris. 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 The, ch the meaning of Cheris. And so as I began to check about it, Cherit, the meaning of the word cherit, the Hebrew word for cherit means a place of isolation. Wow. A place of isolation. It means to carve or to engrave. To engrave upon, to carve or and a place of isolation. It's a place. So God says to Elijah, I got to do some things within you. I'm preparing you because ultimately I've got to get you uh, to the mount. I've got to put you on the mount, and I've got to, I'm going to use you to bring, to stop the rain. I'm going to use you to bring the rain, and I need to use you to, to take out the prophets, the, the prophets of Baal, and also to bring the fire. But before I use you to bring the fire, I got to take some things and deal with you personally in. Some of us, we want God's anointing. We like God to bring the fire through our ministries and lives. And God said, I got a time and a purpose and a season to use you to bring the fire, to bring the anointing. But as I prepare you for that, that timing, I want to get you ready. So I've got to send you a couple of places and you're there and make provisions to adjust you and prepare you that my glory may be revealed. So I'm going to send you a couple of places. You got to make a couple of stops along the way for the main task or one of the main tasks that I'm going to assign you. So sometimes we have to understand that God, our purpose for purpose and destiny issues, <clears throat> God has certain tasks for us to do. And sometimes we not be ready. We be not ready. And certain times God will send us certain places as a part of our beds to prepare us and get us ready for something else that he wants us to do. Therefore, you have to understand everything you do with God and everything you do in ministry and purpose and destiny, you have to look at it from seasons for everything. There is a season, a time, and a purpose. So what's the season, the time, and the purpose? The purpose, all purpose have seasons and times. Okay, so now let's look at it. He said, go hide thyself by the brook Cherith. There is meaning, the brook, the name Cherith means ice, a place of isolation. And I was like, wow, wow, a place of isolation. So that means that God has taken Elijah and said, Elijah, as my prophet, I need you to, I need to put you in, quote unquote, a place of isolation. It also means to carve or to engraven upon. And I want to carve into you an experience of me in my presence where I need you to, I need to process you to be dependent upon no resources of your own but mine. I don't need you dependent upon your own resources to feed yourself. The only thing I'm going to allow you to do because I need you, I'm not going to let you go cold turkey. I need you to be dependent upon something I gave you. So I'm going to allow you to use your capacity to survive, 
to hide and to drink from the brook. But as far as feeding yourself for some of your basic necessities, I'm going to provide for that. God always co-partners with us in our process. He doesn't do all of it all the way. He does not allow us to be dependent upon, upon ourselves, but he, he helps us to understand that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would I be? He helps us to understand that whatever you do, you got to give glory and praise to me. Whatever you got and think you got, you don't have it unless it comes through me. So God puts us in positions where we co-partner together and realize if it wasn't for the Lord, ha, where would I be? Go, go to the there, because at the there, God said, we're going to journey together. We're going to have this relationship where you're going to learn that all your sources and all your resources and everything about this process comes from me. And I want to grow you and mature you for a season. For a season, you got to be totally dependent on me. You got to live outside. You got to hide. Hey, I need you to use your mindset. You got to be in hiding mode. Put you in hiding mode, trust mode, sustainment mode. And I'm going to take care of you outside, outdoors, by the ravine, living outside. So the brook chariot is a place of isolation. Then if we look at that term, that Hebrew term, uh, isolate, carve, I need to carve into you. I need to put into you. I need to write on your heart and on your mind as I isolate you in a place called isolation. I'm going to put you at the brook chariot, which means a isolated place by the brook so that I can cut off you and I can carve on you and cut on you to be totally dependent upon my resources. Totally dependent upon me and my resources. Totally. Now you understand, I passed in the United Methodist Church for about eight years or so, and when we would do the offering and the offertory, uh, we used to sing, you know, little verses, little hymns, and little parts. So we were saying, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Oh, amen. As we took our offering, now, some of you all, you know, you, you, you used to sing the song, you can't be God given, no matter how you try. You know, we had our little songs, give and it shall be given to you. But they sing, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. We've given back to thee. Our resource have come back from the source. You are our source, and out of the sourcing of us, we have resource back to you. So, Elijah, everything that you can come up with, your hiding and your mindset and your mentality, your capacity to survive by the brook chariot, a place of isolation, I have carved and cut into thee that process to become dependent totally upon me and my resources because the ravens are mine. The brook is mine. We're going to negotiate this together. So it's a place where God cuts off and we are putting in my nose totally dependent upon God and his resources. So therefore, it's a place to come aside with God. I need you to come aside with me. I need you to go by the brook terror. I need you to come to a quiet place. I need you to separate yourself from everything around you. Don't, don't, don't go and hang at the school of the prophets. Well, I need to hear from God, so I'm going to go to the school of the prophets. I know they're in Gilgal and they're in Jericho and they're in different places. I just need me a prophetic word, so I'm going to go to this conference and I'm going to, this, and I'm going to go and, and sit at this retreat. God said, no, 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 no. I need you to hide away. Go take a sabbatical. I need you to find a quiet place. I'm going to put you in a quiet. I'm going to cut off. Sir, well, you know, you, you, you've been preaching three or four times a week. 
you all over the place, you're running here, you're passing, you're preaching here and there, but right now I'm preparing you for something bigger, greater, and so I have to put a time frame in you. I need you on sabbatical. I want to, I'm going to cut, I want you to cut back on your engagement. Brent said, you know, I don't have too many engagements. I used to get engaged. People call me. I was over here, over there, flying here, flying. But I know as I look at my book for the whole month of April, the whole month of June, the whole month of what I don't have nothing. Could it be your your brook cherries? Could it be your cherries? God has said, I need you to hide your. I need you to come aside. I, I need some quiet time with you. I need to carve into you some things. I need to cut off for you some things. So that's what cherries meant. Go by the brook cherry. Go into this quiet place. Go into protection mode. Don't want everybody speaking into your spirit, all speaking around you. I not, don't want you to be paranoid, but I want you to hide yourself. I want you to purposely get away. Not all, oh, you know, it just so happened I found myself. No, no. On purpose, I need you at the brook. On purpose, I need you to understand I have commanded the ravens. Look for the ravens for they coming. Eat from the brook, because it's going to be drink from the brook, because it's flowing. I will fulfill your thirst and your need. Your thirst for the water is provided. Your needs for your food and your thirsty, I have. Isn't it something that God put you places? Some of you all have gone places and have places where you have a thirst and you thirsty, and you go to the brook, the spiritual brook, and you're still thirsty. You go places, and you get fed, and you come back still hungry. It didn't say that the ravens fed him and he was always, God, you know, they fed me, but I don't know what they gave me today, but I, I'm still hungry. I'm hungry all week long. I just don't seem to get enough. No, there are two meals that they're going to bring you, and I'm a God of more than enough, and I'm going to make sure that when the ravens feed you for that day, you're going to be full. You're going to be full, and the, the, the thirst is going to be quenched. Oh, my. You mean God puts me in a place of isolation and yet he feeds me. He feeds my hunger and thirst. Yes, the biblical text said, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. So at your cherries, God takes care of your thirst and your hunger by his commanded means, not by your figured out means. And he says, I want you to cooperate with what I have sent you. That's a challenge for our flesh. Because sometimes you can say, well, Apostle Branson, you know, I know I'm where well, God wants me right now. But I don't like what he, I don't like. How you going to be where, how you're going to be where God wants you to be, but don't like the process. <laughs> well, he could at least sent me this or sent me that. Why? No, you got to go with the process. You may not like it. Paul said, I have learned. At whatever state I am, there to be content. I know to a how to abound, and I know how to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me because he's teaching me through my experience. How? That no matter what state I am, I got to be content. So God is saying, I hear God talking to somebody. God said, I'm sending you to, to, to Cherith. I'm, if, trust me. I'm going to provide for you at Cherith, but hide yourself. Don't be in everybody's face. Come away. Come into a quiet place. Come to my presence. Trust me to be your resourcing through this season because I'm preparing you to bring the fire, to call in the rain. It's a dry season, but I'm going to sustain you in your process. So Cherith, the brook Cherith. So that's a quiet place. So the position. So God says, now look, <coughs> I need you to be at the Cherith. So let's look at a place. So we're saying Cherith as we look at the name. We said we're going to go into the story. And we looked at Elijah and we look at some of his personality. We looked at the raven. We're looking at the brook, the waters. Now we're looking at, we're dissecting the name of the brook Cherith and its meaning. The Hebrew meaning. And so now look at it. A place where God actually, let's look at the principle now from the text. A place where God actually remind, removes you 
for a specific purpose. Your cherith is a place where God actually removes you and puts you in for a specific purpose, for a process to carve in and isolate you to totally be taught how to totally depend on him as a source. A cutting off is a, a place where he's cutting things off you. So let's look at that. Let's go back now and let's see if we can find some parallels. We still, wow, Brinson, all that's in the text. That's how you do exegesis. So now we have exegesis and homiletics. So how we going to get into the text, look at the text, dig the text, and see what's in there, Who, what was the text, who was the ABCs of exegesis, what did the text say, who were the characters, and what were the people in the text, what are the principles, what the, and, and then A, B, C, and so based upon the principle of the text, how does this affect my life? Now, what is the hermeneutic? What is the thought? And how do I present this process? And how do I teach and preach it and paint the picture and tell the story? That's my hermeneutic. So I'm telling the story. So let's go back and do some parallels because there's nothing new under the sun. The cherished experience. There were a couple of people that had a charity experience. Let's look at it. There's a couple of people. Moses. Moses had a cherished experience. Remember, 40 years on the backside of the desert. I've got to send you to Cherith. I'm going to send you to the wilderness, the backside of the desert, let you meet a woman, get married, and let you meet Jethro, and be keeping some sheep and all that because I'm preparing you and developing some skills in you to go back to Pharaoh. And then because of your, your PTSD, you had a stammering situation growing up in the situation as Pharaoh's daughter, missing some of your family and all that, and couldn't have way talking, stammering, had a stuttering tongue. But that's all right because I'm going to put my tongue in you and I'm going to give you a prophet. So you can't have a prophet that will speak your words unless you can't speak. So I'm going to have to bring you some relationships, but I'm going to have to put you on the backside of the desert for 40 years until you can see the burning bush to prepare you. Wow, for the burning bush, for the fire, and then for the next fire, and then from the pillar of fire, but I have to prepare you. So Moses had a chariot. Where's, what is your chariot? When I look at the biblical text and I look at, are there some other characters in the Bible that had a chariot, a place, a cutting away? a place, a resource. Well, yes, Joseph had a cherith. Joseph, you having dreams and you're not making sense out of them. You telling them, but I'm preparing you. So I've got to let you go and, and let your brothers do evil. And then I got to send you, uh, I got to put you in prison for false accusations, for sexual assault or whatever, accusing and all that. I got to let you go through this process because I got to send you to prison because I got to prepare you to be a father to Pharaoh. So I got to put you in a cherished experience and do my provisions and put you in a place that as you use your stuff and try to use your own influence to get you out, you can't get out. He told the butler and the baker, you know, when y'all get back, tell them that I'm in this place. And he interpreted the dream. God lets you use certain people and they and you give them stuff at your chariot and you expect them to put a word in for you. And they forget all about you. They look over you for promotions and you didn't help this person, help that person. And where you are, you, you like the grand poo by. It said nobody ate. Well, it started out with him being in Potiphar's house. You know, with a cloak. So now I, I'm on Joseph. I got to put you through a process. I'm going to let your daddy give you a coat of many colors, set up your mindset. Then I'm going to let them tear that coat off you and, and change your whole mentality. I'm going to send you as a slave to part of his house, but I'm going to give you a promotion. And so you're going to be the chief steward. So I'm going to give you another cloak. So you're going to be prancing around with a different outfit on. Out of all the other servants, your coat. It's not a coat of many colors, but your coat is a coat of promotion. But then I'm going to let that same coat be taken from you. The first coat was taken by your brothers. The second coat, I'm going to fix it where you have to get up out of it. Now, a lot of people don't want to get up out of their position. But I'm going to put Potiphar's wife in a position to grab your position, grab your coat, and whatever it means for you to let it go, 
then lie on you to put you in prison and now you got another outfit on. But I'm going to give you some clout because all along the way, everybody that you come in contact with going to tell that no matter where you are and what you in, God is still with you. Wow, God is still with you. You at the brook chariot, but God is still with you. His provisions for who you are, your name, whatever. You are still a man of God, a woman of God, no matter where you are. People can't take that away from you. Even in your process of being by a brook or in a brook chariot. All right, all right, so what's happening? God is hiding his best while you are sitting in the worst. And so then you get a promotion to the honor dorm where you now, you the head, you, the, you in prison, but you really the ward. Nobody eat or sleep or do anything unless you command it. So now you clout. You the chief, you the chieftain. You, so you got a, your outfit is a little different. There you go. There's your third outfit. First outfit, coat of many colors. Wow. That brought a lot of stuff. Let's take that away. Now you got a coat that represents the chief steward. Wow. Take that away. Now you got a prison uniform. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And something about your prison uniform, you dictate. Now you've been moved to the inner prison. Now you're in the house arrest prison where you meet the middle class urban people. Because, see, when you went to prison the first time, the first seven years that you were in prison, I need you to meet everybody from the street, every, everybody from the street. Why I'm in the prison with all these thugs and stuff? Because where I'm going to put you, you're going to be dealing with thugs. You're going to have to learn uh, the scam artists. You're going to, I'm not just going to, God don't give us stuff and put us in stuff. Up and we just like, well, God gave me this promotion and stuff, but I'm I'm green. God don't put you somewhere where you green. Well, I'm green and I'm new at this. You better bet your bottom dollar that wherever God send you and put you, he put you there because you ready to be there. He grows you there, but you better bet that every skill, gift, talents, and grace that you need to start the process is in you. That's why God has put you there. I feel this thing today. You at your brook chariot. You better look at the resources, at God's resources, and how God's resources work within you to produce and prepare you for the next move. And so now he's in house arrest because now I got to move you with the blue and white collar criminals where the bankers and politicians and the cup bearer and the baker and all those who are around the king. See, I, you was at Potiphar's house and you learned everything about war and the army because he came in and he talked about the war and the army so you knew about how to run the army and the stuff because he confided in you. Now I'm going to put you in the prison with everybody and so you learn all the community so everybody talk to you about this stuff so you learn street. I'm going to teach you street. And now I'm going to move you into the political side of the prison where you meeting with the middle class because where I'm about to take you you're going to sit on top of all kinds of people and you know people got full of schemes. You ain't gonna be, Lord, them so folks so evil, folks are crazy. You know, they know when God put you somewhere, don't all of a sudden be acting and looking surprised. I mean, I'm surprised. I can't believe they did that. I can't believe, no, believe it and go back to understand, don't be playing stupid on God's assignment. <laughs> people be playing all stupid on God's provision. God said, you playing stupid? Well, okay, so stupid is what stupid is. You playing stupid and ignorant on my assignment. So that means I got to do some more stuff to help you understand it's by my grace I got you here and all this stuff. I don't make, don't make sense. A lot of stuff don't make sense when you on God's assignment because you, his ways ain't your ways nor his thoughts your thoughts but he put you at chariot so you can learn his ways and become sensitive to his thoughts wow all that's in the text and so now it's time now it's time so the only thing I need to do based upon your skill set that you develop I need to create a scenario to use your skill sets that you have developed all this time so now I only have to do is give Pharaoh a dream, use your wisdom to go now. Now you got to shave your head and, and check. Well, I'm not doing all that. No, you better come on now. I got to put you over. You put on your suit. No, I don't wear no suit. I don't wear that. I know you better put on something. Get yourself ready because I'm getting ready to make a move now. And your season is about to shift. 
So you, everything's got to come in flow. By the time you're ready, you'll be ready. By the time God shifts you, you'll be ready. You may not be ready right now because your brook ain't dried up yet. It ain't even start trickling yet because when the brook dry up, that means it had to start trickling. So some of you all been flowing, now you're in a trickle. That means what is happening? God is about to shut your brook down. Oh, you should be getting excited even though it's not coming like it should, but you still got the, you can still drink water. It just takes you longer to get the water in the cup. But the trickle is coming, you still got water. But that ought to be a sign that something is, a, as they say, it's finna, it's finna, finna. Something finna happen. Something is about to happen. I'm preparing myself for the shift. Somebody that I'm talking to, you in a trickle right now in your ministry. You in a trickle because there's about to be a shift to another place of your provision. All right, y'all getting me happy. Now let me slow it back down. Come on, calm down, brother. Come on, calm down. So, so here it is. So now Joseph, he has his share. Now he's getting ready to stand before the king, before Pharaoh, and then what? He becomes a father of a Pharaoh. What happened? He gets another robe. He gets another robe. He gets a chain around his neck. He gets a chariot. And he gets, the, he, he gets a whole wardrobe of robes now. A wife to go along with it, and he now can travel the land and see things. All that has to do with his different coats, different cloaks, from the coat of many colors to the coat of part of his house to the coats of the prison house to the coats of Pharaoh's house. All that at his brook Cherith for the next move to save a whole nation and nations around because the famine was coming. So Joseph has a Cherith experience. Not only that, but David has a Cherith experience. All the stuff, he killed the lion, he killed the bear, he killed the giant. Saul has slain his thousands, David is 10,000. He be saved, behaves himself wisely. He plays as the temple musician, but Saul is out to kill him. So he ends up at the cave of Adullam. Wow, that's the Cherith. Go hide yourself. And stay there for a while. And I'm going to send to you what you need. My provisions. Everybody, I'm going to send you your 300 mighty. I'm going to send you what you need to keep you on the run, to do what you got to do. I'm going to send you to Gilgal, get you struck, learn how to put together a town and all that. Then I'm going to burn your Gilgal down because I'm going to shift you. When I burn Gilgal, I'm shifting you to prepare you to be a king in Hebron. Wow. Sometime in your process of shifting is a fire. There's a fire again. There's a burn down to a greater anointing. And so then, and Paul. Paul had a chariot. He was in the wilderness. <coughs> His eyes were open, but he went, he, Paul, I need you to get away for 11 years while you was a nobody. For 11 years. I needed you to get a revelation from me, to be caught up in the third heaven, whatever, to know me, Paul, an apostle of God, not by the will of man. I was put in a cherished experience of hiding. Some of you all, God takes out of the community, takes out of every place because he wants to give you a new experience, a new way with him, and he don't want people to see your process. He wants them to experience your finished product because he's taking you somewhere new because you'll go back and, and they'll pull you back down Do you remember when you know you used to do. No, no. Paul can say, forgetting those things that are behind me, I reached forward to those things that before I pressed toward the call or the prize of a higher calling in Christ Jesus. So Cherith is a place of a process to take you to your Zarephath. All right, so he's at, he said, so Paul, so Moses, Joseph, David, Paul, others, you know, others, you could probably pull up others. Then you can go from the biblical text and go into the community. Let's pull out history. Let's look at certain people. Let's look at certain people. God used Martin Luther King and Frederick Pug does, but some of you all, certain men and women of God, go back and read their stories, their autobiography, God's generals. Read stories about men and women of God. See if you can find the book, Cher their Cherith, where they were isolated for a time so God could say, I want you to know me. I want to use you, but I need you to experience who I am. And so here, here we go. So now he's at the brook Cherith. After a while, the brook dries up. Wow. 
So we're still we're still in in the seventeenth chapter. We so he says now okay now, isn't it something that God did not change his assignment to after the brook dried up? What do you mean, Brent? Well, let's go back in here and see here. I'm I'm gonna read that. Um, it says uh, verse uh, seven, chapter seventeen, verse seven. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, shift, arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Now, he didn't say hide there now. So you can come on out of hiding and now you can live now. You don't, I want you to go dwell, but you don't have to hide in your dwelling and dwell there. Behold, think, check it out. I have commanded a widow woman there where you're going to dwell to sustain thee. Wow. Now, uh, he told him to hide yourself by the brook Cherith. And you're going to drink of the brook. He commanded the ravens to feed him. And he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. Some of you all, God then told you to go hide yourself and you ain't gone yet. You, you haven't even had your cherished experience yet. God said, go hide yourself by the brook. I, I, I got, I, that's where I want you. Go where I want you. Go, go where I want you. And you haven't done according to the word of the Lord. Now here in the text it said, so he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook. He didn't say, well, I need to get a hotel. I need to get me a house in that neighborhood. No, no, because God said hide. So how you going to be hiding in a place where people can see and identify? How do you hide at an address that's public. Where's so-and-so? I haven't seen so-and-so. Where's apostle? Where's prophet so-and-so? Where's reverend so-and-so? Where, where's so-and-so? You supposed to be in hiding all on social media, all everywhere. God said, no, come off that. Close your Facebook page. Come down off of this. Come down off of that. Get away with me. Uh, in fact, he, sometime he'll change your geographical area. And just and you still trying to make contact on the phone call. Hey, how you doing? Where you at? Well, I'm out here. Give me here my address. Call me sometime. Inbox me sometime. You know, Facebook me, Twitter me, Instagram. God said, no, no, I told you to go hide yourself and experience another level of me working with you because I'm preparing you for your next. But you got to be there. And he went according. He went according, according to the word of the Lord. Okay, so now after a while, God said, now when you obey me, no matter what the process is, it's only going to be for a while. After a while, the brook dried up. I'm sure Elijah was probably, well, you know, God, um, when I'm going to leave, when, when, when I'm going to leave, the ravens kept coming. But he gave them a sign. The ravens came in the morning and in the evening. The ravens kept coming. But the brook was a sign. He still got water. He still could drink from the brook. But the resources of his drinking start slowing itself down, even though he could still get cut. So if he got two cups of water before, when the brook is running, just stick the cup down there, boom, you got your water. Uh, as the brook begin to hold back and dry up, which is a sign, God gives you a sign. He'll give you a sign of where you are in your process. If you really pay close attention to him, you'll start having some signs. It ain't gonna be, oop, daddy, wake up one morning, it's over, no. He will process you. So next time, it may have taken him a little longer to get that cup full, because the water, the brook had begun to dry up, but he still could get his water. Then after a while, it, you know, he, he, he got his cup and the brook is trickling 
it's just trickling a little water. It may take a whole half an hour or an hour for him to sit there and hold that cup, but he still is drinking from the brook. The brook is still alive, even though it's not as full as it was, but it's still giving the water. The provision of God is still coming, even though it may have not come as fast as it used to, is there still provision? Are you still getting juice off the lemon? You say, I'm squeezing the lemon, I'm squeezing the orange. Are you squeezing? He said, you got the juice? Yeah. Well, squeeze some more. Is it still coming? Well, you still got the provision. You got the juice. But after a while, ain't no more juice. Don't worry. What happens, apostle, when the brook dry up? Some of us are frustrated because the brook is drying up. We all frustrated. It's trickling. The things are trickling in, and it's barely making it, but are you making it? The brook is drying up, but it has not dried up. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all, I'm talking to you in your process. Why are you in your process and God's resourcing you? Is you getting a cut back? It's drying up. It ain't as fast, but it's still coming. God is already on standby, but he waits till he completes his process. When the brook dried up, the word said, now move. Some of y'all, no, I'm up out of here. The brook is slowing down. God and gave me a revelation. It's slow now, you know. It's slow now. I got 20 people. Now I used to have 100, but you still got people. You got people. Now I'm down to two. You still got people. Now I ain't got nobody. Oh, it's time to go. <laughs> Not, oh, Lord, send them in. Send them in. Send them in. No, take them away. Take them away. Dry up my brook. Dry up my brook because as long as the brook is running, you're still in your process. Oh, my God. After a while, the brook dried up. Some of you all, will you allow the process of God and your assignment on your life to dry up your brook? Or are you leaving as the brook began to trickle and trickle? Are you leaving because the signs are all there that one day this book, this, this brook is about to dry up. So I'm up out of here. In fact, I'm up out of here before it dry up. You ain't gonna have me up in here, apostle, and ain't nothing happening. I'm gonna get up out of here before that. No, God said, you're gonna stay right there until it dry up. Now the day that the brook dry up ain't gonna be no ravens. Your last meal was gotten by the ravens. Your last drink was uh, was happened. Now you hear me, because you've learned how to trust me. God was next. Don't be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow take care of itself. Now the word of the Lord say, hey, you have fought a good fight, finished the course, kept the faith, stayed in the class till it was over. You didn't abort the process. Now I want you to get up Go to Zarephath. I've commanded a widow woman to sustain thee and dwell there. So you don't have to hide no more. Come on out your hiding. I'm going to send you to a city. I'm going to take you from the field. Isn't that something? Y'all had you out there in a the ravine. Out there with the plants and the trees and the animals and had a pet raven and all that stuff in isolation. But in isolation, you learned me. In isolation, you heard my voice. In isolation, you understood my presence. In isolation, I cut some things off you. In isolation, I carved on your mindset who I am. In isolation, you learned to trust me better. In isolation, at your brook chariot. And when I finished with my product uh, in you, I said, now you can get up now. I'm going to send you to a city. I'm going to give you city living. I'm going to take care of your resources, and I'm going to put you someplace where you can be sustained. I'm going to put you at a place where you can be sustained. I got somebody and some people that's going to sustain you. Now, God, there you go. You're going to send me to the wi a widow woman? A widow woman going to sustain me? Well, I got to send you. Now, I know we, you know, our time is running out, so I'm just going to play within this area right now because I see I need a part three. So next week, we're going to be really getting into uh, Elijah making the move to Zarephath. We're going to look at the Zarephath process, the Zarephath process. 
How do I get to, when I get to Zarephath, on my way to Zarephath, there's a move, there's a shift. When is it that you hear God say move and you say, I'm gone? How, how do you move when God say move? How do you say bye to certain things? Because, you know, when you accept the process, sometimes the way we are made, we, we get to adjust it. Sometimes when God puts you in certain places, you may not like it. But you say yes to the process. Ain't that something about how we are? We get adjusted. We get adjusted to the process. You say, Apostle, you know what? When I first came here, I didn't like it. But after a while, it kind of started growing on me. And then I started kind of, even though I didn't like it, accept it. And by that time, I got involved in it. And by the time I got involved in it, started learning how to appreciate it, God said it was time for me to go. God, why you do that? Why you playing in my emotions? Soon as I finally say yes and finally get together, God said, move. Isn't that something? Sometimes, you know, God puts us in situations and circumstances and he gives us and puts us in areas to take on certain projects. And then he moves us and you say, no, 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 I ain't the pine of person. I believe if I start something, I'm going to finish it. Whatever you start, you ought to finish it, doc. How are you going to start something and up and leave it? Because God said time to go. Certain things God don't let you finish. Certain things God send you to get sensitivity and, and develop empathy in a thing, a program or a situational idea. Because he just wants you to learn some of the process, not go all the way through it. Some things he'll take you all the way through. Some things he'll cut short and finish. Up. I will do a quick work and cut it short in righteousness. And while everybody said, no, hey, you know, I had to go through the whole thing. God said, no, because you're on a time journey. I'm going to do a quick work in you. Cut it short in righteousness. I just wanted you to have an overview because where you're going, you don't need a certificate of completion. You just need to know that you've been through there, been there, done there. You didn't get the T-shirt, but you got enough information that you need for your next purpose in your journey. Will you accept chair, share fat? Will, will you go through that? Will you go to your brook? Will you allow yourself to hide under the shadow of the Almighty? Will you dwell in the secret place of the Most High? He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Mighty. So I want you to go to Jerfat. Jerfat is the secret place. Go hide yourself. Go hide yourself. Come into, come under my wings. Come, on, come into my presence. I got to carve in you some things to prepare you for the journey. And so God, we thank you. We praise you. Those that are watching us, that, that you have spoken into, that you are using them, and you have given them to speak a word, the truth, the power. Now you are saying to them, I need you now to go to chair fat. I need you to go to chair fat. I need you to have the chair fat experience. Will you go through the process of the chair fat experience and prepare yourself? Because now God is saying, get up now. It's time for you to go to Zarephath. It's time for you to go to another place. It's time for you now to come out of hiding and to dwell. It's time for you to come out of the ravine, uh, from out of doors, living out in the woods, making fires and, and all of that. I want you to, I'm gonna, I want to put you in a house now. Put you in a house. I'm going to put you in a house. I'm going to send you to a city. You out in the country in the rural, I'm gonna send you in a city that where there's gonna be people. Now you was out there with the animals. I, you know, you was out there with a part of my nature. You know, and you learn how to depend upon my resources, the nature resources, the animals and the plants and all of that. Because now it has something to do with the rain, but at the same time it ain't no rain. So I want you to sense the other kinds of things and be holistic in my process of where I'm taking you. So when I do send the rain, you know that the rain not came not only came to feed the people, it came to feed the brook, it came to feed the flowers. Because I'm sure when the brook dried up, and as the brook be, brook began to dry, the mosquitoes came and all that came. All right, so we're gonna uh, pick up where we left off. We're going to talk about moving from Chera to Zarephat. And uh, you stand, be on standby. Thank you for your time. Some of you all, Google, go get 1 Kings chapter 17. Read on Elijah and, and get some more revelation. Get some and then to revelation. Give me a call. Call me now. Pick up the phone and call me. 773-616-1951. 
Until then, be blessed and go with God.